Amesy here of Amesy's Antics. Welcome to my channel. I hope you're well today because I have another crafty project to share with you and this week I am having a go at hand knitting and making a chunky blanket by hand. As you can see a preview here, I have some massive chunky thick yarn to use to make this blanket and making it a little bit of a cable knit design. So if you would like to see the making of a chunky blanket by hand then let's get crafty. So here is my massive ball of wool and this is the Mammoth Giant Acrylic Extreme Knitting Yarn by Woolly Mahoosive who are based in York and I've purchased the 4 kilogram size in the colour Light Teal but there are a variety of colours and sizes that you can choose from as well. The 4 kilogram will give you the larger blanket. Now because this is acrylic wool it is still unspun like merino but it's a better alternative because you can wash it on a delicate cycle as well as drying it flat and it's more suitable to vegans. Before starting the blanket we just need to unwind quite a lot of the wool. This will just loosen it up and help get rid of any of the loose bits of wool that I win the ball as well as reduce the stretch and tension of that wool. So to start the blanket we just need to create a slip knot I think it is called. So you want to place the working end of the blanket over the top in a loop and then pull this through tightening it pulling on either side until you get the desired size stitch or loop that you want for the blanket. So you will have two tails for this. One will be attached to the large ball of wool and the other will be the end. So you just want to place the end bit to the one side that you are not working on and then have your working piece of yarn going in the direction you're working. Then you want to bring the working piece of yarn up through that first loop and then put your hand through the next loop and bring it through again. So you, your working yarn is creating those loops. And for your first row, you want to do 26 of these. And this is the casting on part of that blanket. So create a loop, put your hand through and pull that working yarn through until you get to the end of the 26 stitches. The wool is still a bit delicate so be careful not to pull it too tightly and make sure that the loops are generally the same size because this will alter the tension of the blanket. And then it is time to start the first row. So you want to move your working yarn in the direction you are going, then bring up that working yarn through those top loops. So where you can see it's crossed over, you want to put your hand through and then bring up that working yarn as so. Again, creating equal size loops if you can because this will help with the tension of the blanket. I hope that makes sense. Keep going until you reach the end of this stitch and if you find any pieces of wool are coming out, you can gently pull them out or smooth them into that working yarn. And once again, once you get to the end, you want to move your working yarn in the direction you are going, bring your hand through that loop and create a new loop with that working yarn. So you're placing your hands through the loop and then up, but then to create that ribbed cable knit look, you then want to bring the working yarn in front of the loop and then pull it through to the back. And you want to do this for two stitches. So you want to do two at the back and then two at the front, then two at the back and two at the front and keep going in this fashion until you get to the end of the blanket. And I believe this is called a pearl stitch, but I may be mistaken here, but this is just altering how the wool sits and you'll get the raised edges with the bits that are behind. So like I say, you do two behind and then two in front, two behind and two in front. And once you get a few rows going, you will then see it 
finally starting to take that cable knit shape obviously if you don't want like the cable ribbed look then you can just carry on doing the two behind and this will give it that really nice plaited look to the blanket And then you want to repeat the process once again when you get to the end of that row making sure that your working yarn is going in that direction that you are working in so starting by bringing the working yarn in two stitches from behind and then placing it two stitches in the front bringing it behind again for two stitches keep going until you have several rows of your blanket complete and you'll start seeing it taking shape with that lovely cable knit look. You may find that your yarn is twisted in places so you just want to gently untwist this and smooth it down. There will also be loose pieces of the uh, yarn at times so you might just have to smooth these in or if they, you can't smooth them in and they are splitting and going in the wrong direction then just gently pull and tease these out of the pile. I did have a pile of little bits of the shredded wool to one side you may also find that there are little bits of hard plastic with it being the acrylic yarn but this isn't a problem you just gently remove them and smooth it on down and once you are getting to near the end of your ball of wool you just want to take note of how much you have left because you need enough to be able to cast off so to cast off and complete the blanket you want to take the first two loops bring the working yarn in the direction you are going and thread this through the two loops creating a new loop with that working yarn as so then you want to place your hand through this working yarn and select the next available loop in that row and again bring that working yarn through the two of them creating a new loop and keep going on and on in this fashion until you get to the end of that row now it can be a little bit fiddly and if you are coming towards the end of your ball of yarn you may find that it is a bit more splintering a bit more frayed looking so you just need to smooth this down and take it nice and easy and this will look like the first casting on stitches that we did and has a really nice finished plaited look to the edge of that blanket if you find that you don't have enough wool to complete the casting off stitches it is really easy to unravel all you need to do is gently pull that working yarn to unravel all of the stitches that you've done and you want to just remove the last line of stitching before the casting off and that should give you enough yarn to be able to complete the casting off process to the blanket When you get to the last loop, you want to bring that working yarn through to create the final loop of the blanket. And then you just want to bring the end of the working yarn through and creating that slip knot once again, like when we started. This will give a little bit of a knotted look at the end. And any of the trailing or tail part of the wool can then simply be woven into the existing stitches that are on the blanket and you can't tell because it is so chunky it will just blend in with the rest of the stitches on the blanket mm -hmm. 
You also want to make sure you do this part with the first tail that we did on the first slip knot. So make sure that is threaded in place. And then the chunky blanket is complete. And that is the process of making a chunky blanket by hand. You make me nervous. I think I might be hooked on you. I love the things you said, you said to me. You like me too We can take it slow Make sure we do this right Canceled all my plans to be with you tonight Tonight So just sit with me So they have the making of a chunky blanket by hand and I absolutely love how this turned out. Now because it is a nice thick chunky yarn you can make this as a loose knit as you want or do it a bit tighter and it does really make you feel cozy and warm and it's going to be perfect for when the temperatures really drop and I think they are starting to drop now um, so this is coming at a really good time I think. Now I did a little bit of a different design so I've done a bit where it's raised so it's like a cable knit type and I really liked that this was different from other chunky blankets and it gives it a bit of definition. Now I'm not saying I made this 100% accurately, there are a few little mistakes and I did drop a few stitches and maybe did the few wrong stitches in places but it doesn't matter because you can hide this by sort of tucking in that chunky yarn into other loops. And if you have gone a little bit wrong, you have a front side and a back side, so you can hide it underneath on that back side. And I think it turned out fabulously. I really like it. Now I want to make some giant chunky pillows to go with it or cushions. I think it would look absolutely beautiful. So let me know what you think of this DIY craft in them comments below and whether you'll be making your own chunky blanket this winter to keep you nice and warm. I would love to know your thoughts and if you've enjoyed the video then please do give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to keep up with more of my creative and crafty antics coming up onto the channel and whilst you're there hit that notification bell as well because that will alert you each time my videos go live. I also have a blog Ames's Antics which is linked down below and up above for you to check out as well because sometimes there's just a little bit more information over on the blog and with that said I will see you in next week's video and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and week and are able to do something creative and crafty to pass the time over the next week and just do something that makes you feel happy like maybe make a giant chunky blanket and with that said, I will see you in the next one. Bye!